Hi, it's Chris here from the EQMod project. In this video I'd like to look at some of the common communications issues that can occur and how to diagnose them. Okay, as you can see I've got the uh, toolbox application open and I'm going to be using that to test the connection to the mount. And I'll explain why in a, in a second. Okay, let's try to connect. As you can see, EQ Asgum has popped up and it's, it's given us an error message. Now, the reason I'm using the toolbox application uh, to do this test is I've noticed that many ASCOM client applications, uh, like planetariums, have a habit of closing down uh, EQ Ascom if it doesn't successfully connect. So what you see is EQ Ascom a, a briefly appear on the screen and then disappear. Uh, now that isn't terribly useful if you want to read the error messages that EQ Ascom is giving you. Uh, the toolbox application, on the other hand, will leave EQ Ascom uh, up on the screen so we can see what the error message is. Okay, now in this case, what we've got is a port not available error and this is telling us that the port that we've requested EQ Ascom to use in the setup uh, from the setup screen either doesn't physically exist uh, on your PC hardware or perhaps is, is being used by something else. Uh, in either case it, it implies that your, your port number in your driver setup is wrong. Now, if we open up the driver, and I'll close this down now, disconnect. If we open up the uh, driver setup, we can see I've selected COM5. COM5 is what I'm saying. This is where I expect my communications to be coming in on. Uh, if I look at what the Windows knows about the COMS ports, so to do that we uh, go into administrative tools, computer management, device manager and open up the ports section. You can see that currently Windows only knows that I've got a, a, a COM1 and a COM4. There's no COM5 and that's why we're getting the error in, in, in EQ ASCOM. So if we assume that one of these is correct, uh, how do we know which one? Well, the easiest thing to do is, if you have a, a USB um, to 232 converter, or if you're using a, uh, a USB EQ Direct type device, uh, the easiest thing to do is, is simply unplug it. Once it's unplugged, the device will uh, go, drop out of this list, so one of these entries will go missing, and when you plug it back in, it'll come back and, and clearly that way you know which COM port is connected to which device. Uh, now sometimes you may find that the COM port number that's allocated is greater than 16. Uh, this typically happens with USB type uh, COM ports uh, and that's because every time a device is plugged into a different uh, USB socket uh, a different COM port number is, is allocated on some makes of, of device. If you're using a lot of hubs and things uh, then you can get uh, quite high numbers of COM ports or high COM port numbers being allocated. Uh, now EQ ASCOM will only let you select up to COM16 so you may have to change your COM port number uh, and you can do this quite easily by double clicking on the device that you want to change, go into port settings, go into advanced, and there's a COM port number there, and you can pick any number you wish. Now some of them will probably be marked as in use, that just means, it doesn't mean they're in use now, it means they have been used in the past. Um, I'm going to select COM3 just to show you, you can change it to COM3. Uh, if I click OK, it'll give me a warning saying it has been used by another device, but you just say yes. 
and there we go it's it's changed so when I close this down and if I refresh on this um, probably F5 probably or perhaps not uh, scan for hardware changes there we go Just rebuild the list, and you can see that that, that device has now changed to COM3. Okay, uh, I'm going to close that down, and I'm now going to plug in my COM5. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is test the connection again. Now this time you'll see the EQASCOM window sort of appears in kind of a ghost fashion uh, and it takes quite a long time for it to actually come up properly. We'll just wait. There we go. And what we get here is a timeout error. Now the reason it took so long is EQASCOM has found COM5. It exists. Uh, it can get access to it. Uh, so it sent a message out. Now, because we've configured retries and timeouts in the setup screen, uh, it's going to send a message out, and then it's going to wait for a response, and if it doesn't get one, it's going to send another message out, uh, wait again for another response, and eventually it says, there's just nothing coming back here. Um, so we've got a timeout error. Now, there's a number of reasons why you might get timeouts. Uh, the most obvious is perhaps your mount isn't switched on uh, or if you're using a handset in uh, a, a syn scan uh, as the interface to the mount perhaps you haven't put it in PC direct mode uh, but of course there are other things that might cause it um, it could be your serial port drivers uh, make sure that they're up to date um, particularly if you're using a, a USB 232 converter that uses uh, prolific the prolific chipset or prolific drivers. Um, there are problems with the earlier versions of, of, of drivers. Uh, it could also tell you that there is a, a, a cabling error or perhaps a hardware failure on your um, probably not on your USB 232 converter because the COM port has been found but it could be on your EQ Direct device if you're using one uh, or it could be on any cables that, that, that are going to the mount okay uh, that pretty much sums up this this tutorial or this video um, see you next time